make radio. You're not gonna need a power drill or a reciprocal saw or even a chainsaw. We're going low tech to protect your high tech on this Christmas theme of tank radio. So play that awesome intro video. I hope I don't get demonetized for this. Let's take a quick moment to understand some of the physics that goes on in an EMP. First, when electrons travel over a wire, it's actually not traveling in the wire. It's traveling around the outside of the wire. So you have that copper core and the electron flow that's generating that current is flowing around the outside of the wire. Even in antennas, when they pick up the electrical charge from the radio wave, that current that's driven by the radio wave is traveling on the outside of the wire and not on the inside. An EMP cage is taking that principle and scaling it up. So when we have a metal or a metal can, when the EMP wave is hitting and interacting with the metal in this can and generating a charge, or it can generate a current, that current's traveling on the outside of the metal can and not in, not in the inside of our can. So anything we put inside here is gonna be safe from that electromagnetic pulse and it's gonna prevent it from penetrating inside. To also better prevent our electronics from interacting, I'm gonna lay the inner of this with carpet to insulate it even more from that charge. I'm gonna test this tin to see if it's a good Faraday cage by taking my radio and turning it to an FM station or a normal radio station. When I put the radio inside the tin and I close the lid, I expect to hear static and that means it's blocking the signal. This is a good test on what actually is gonna happen when there's an EMP. doesn't quite fit. We're gonna do it anyways. I think that's enough principles for now. Let's, let's go down to the garage and just build the thing. So what are we gonna use for this build? Some things that we get from Christmas time, popcorn tins and a cookie tin. We all get these during the Christmas time and after we cleaned them, or ate them, we are going to go ahead and make a Faraday cage out of it. First, we're gonna measure the circumference of the popcorn tin. 28 inches on the nose. And we're gonna say that's eight inches because it's technically eight and a half to the top of the lid here, but I wanna leave about a half an inch of space so that this lid can have good contact with the outside of the tin. So that will be shielding our electronics there. Then inside, I need a eight and a half circle. Which, how I'm gonna do that, I have no idea. 28 inches. by two. It's not long at all. So what I'm trying to figure out here is what is the best way to mark a circle then cut it out? Let me mull on this for a bit. Let's jump to cutting. That was much easier than I thought it was gonna be. I went ahead and made a four and a quarter template because working with that tape measure was a little unruly. So I know from this point to that point is four and a quarter. So then I could go from there to here also, there, there's also, and there. I already got a dot there, we'll make it bigger and continue on. We 
gonna do seven inches and seven divided by two is three and a half. And now I'm gonna try to find the center of the next circle. There's my center. All right, let's see how well I do cutting circles. Hey, hey. Look, Frank did a thing. And the small one. And there we go. We're gonna do a couple quick fit tests, starting with the small cage here, or the cookie tin. And that is a little long because we measured on the outside of the ring. So that's gonna give us a longer diameter, which is okay, we can always trim up. Um, just measuring on the inside, I tried before and it just took too long and it was complicated with this guy. It's just easier to measure on the outside. So I got about a quarter inch there I could cut off. Um, how about the circle for the inside? I left a quarter inch on either side, so a half an inch short. I did that purposely so we can put the um, inner ring carpet around the outside and have a complete protection so any of our electronics is not touching the um, tin can. Let's see how we did on the big guy. Again, it's overlapping down here, which is okay. I'm trying to say about an inch this time. And um, we're going ahead and we're going to go ahead and trim that off. Let me go ahead and mark it. I'll mark it later. Let's go ahead and try the inner circle. The inner circle is a little large than this guy. It took a little bit of effort pushing him down. Um, I think after we trim this up, he'll go down a little easier. So I went ahead and marked where I wanted to cut with my finger. And here we go. Let's be more conservative. Fit test number two. I think that's about right. It's still a little long, but I had to force the ends apart, which is great pressure around the outside. I'm gonna like that to help adhere the glue. So I'm gonna keep it that way. Let's go ahead and try the bottom. Bye neighbor. Look at that. Ooh, I love it. Time for this guy. Again, I'm gonna be a little conservative from where I marked. There we are, very nice. And the bottom ring, ho 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 ho! That is beautiful, so beautiful. Now unlike this tin, this tin has a half an inch around the outside, I did that purposely. I thought I was trying to do the same here. My worry is if some of this carpet fabric, you know, gets over the lip, then when you try to close it, there is a gap here and you're not getting a complete seal around the lid when you close it. How we're gonna clean this up, I don't know. There we go. Not a lot of the strands poking up now. I got about a quarter inch, almost a half inch now, of space between here and the lip. Well, maybe I'll try that other side. Be much cleaner. Yes, I like that. So I'm gonna mark this as up. And the glue that I'm using today is Gorilla Glue Industrial Strength. I just went to Home Depot and bought this. Um, it was the only one that had carpet and metal in it, and which is, tin is metal. We're hearing to. So let's go ahead and start gluing this. I thought I did everything. You gotta cut this part. 
There it is. We'll turn that into a nozzle now. There it goes. Much easier. Should I do it? Should I do it? T A N K. Yeah. Radio. And I left one little end with no glue so I can overlap it really fast. Oops, 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 oops. That went all the way up to the top. Instruction says it will here about in 30 seconds, so that's good. It's gonna clean off the access from the lip, so that's gonna get in the way of the seal we wanna create. All right, on to the bottom. Again, I'm not putting glue around the edge too close because uh, I don't want to transfer the glue into the inner carpet. Hey, <laughs> bullseye. Push all the way down. Push the ends in. And there is cage number one. <laughs> Now the second one. All right. So again, I left the glue about an inch away from the edge, both sides, so I can overlap it more this time. Come in. Push it all the way down. And then clear, clean the lip. That new carpet smell. <laughs> All right, for the last, oh no! Did not want it there, there. For the last bottom part. And down the hatch. It's on my forearm. How did it get there? Here it is. Cage number two. I'm gonna call this the popcorn cage and the cookie cage. <laughs> and the moment of truth. Lid number one. Oh, ho, ho. Lid number two. Very nice. Very nice. I think this one's a little loose. I think there was some sealer I saw in Josh's video and we'll um, put this on later. But that is the build. It's just that easy. I did it in roughly 40 minutes. And that included messing with the camera, getting in the shot right and all that other stuff. But um, it is really that simple. So until next time y'all, go forth and conquer. You can help support the channel by Patreon or YouTube memberships. Links in the description below. And a thank you to all my supporters. Go forth and conquer.